Thank you everyone for showing up to this community meeting to talk about the possibility of the Buffalo Mountain Food Co-op buying the village market. So as some of you may, yes. Not yet, I'm about to get there. I'm gonna get there. I can do that right now. So welcome. My name is Sharon Fialco. I've been asked by the co-op to help facilitate this meeting to make sure that it goes smoothly and to ensure that everyone who wants to speak has a voice and time to do so. Um, so if you feel like I need some tips or that isn't happening well, get my attention. That is my goal, to make sure that folks get information and have the ability to speak if they would like. So thank you all for being here. Um, let me run through a couple of logistics as we get started. One is that um, it's very important that everybody is comfortable. So I personally will not be offended if you need to stand up and move around in the back as long as it's not distracting. Another part of comfort is to know where the bathrooms are. There's an outhouse right off to the side there that's ready for us if we need it. Um, there are also apples, carrots, and I think water at the table right outside. And again, as long as it's not distracting, feel free to get up and, and um, help yourself to some of those snacks when you want to. Um, that back table is also going to have um, sign-ups for membership. So um, many of you here may already be members of the co-op. Some of you may not be a member of the co-op. This decision about whether or not the co-op moves and um, buys the village market is ultimately going to be decided by the members. And so if you would like a vote in that decision and you are not a member, we welcome you to join up and become one. So Catherine is at the back picnic table there and is happy to sign folks up for membership at any point. So the last logistical piece is that this meeting is being recorded. Everybody can wave to Jim. Hello, Jim. <laughs> Jim is here from HCTV. And so um, this meeting will eventually be posted on the HCTV website. And it will also be playing on cable channel 1080. Um, if for some reason, but at certain points, we'll be able to ask questions and to be able to speak in front of the group. If you do not want to be recorded, there is an option of writing down your question or comment at the sign-up table there to have somebody else read it for you. But otherwise, just the heads up that we're being recorded. All right, so we have two hours today. Um, and part of what we're going to do is both get information out and then have time to digest it and think about it. So in terms of getting information out, we're going to start with some presentations. Annie is from the board. Catherine Bessie is from CDI, which is a group that did a financial feasibility study um, for us. David Lute is also from the board. And Emily Hirschberger is the co-op's general manager. So we'll have presentations from them, and at the end, we'll take clarifying questions. Not like, let's chew and figure out all this stuff, but just to make sure that you understand what was presented, and if you have any kind of questions for which they're easy, factual answers. Then we're going to move into the discussion part, which is really to help everybody be able to, to digest all this information so that we can make intelligent decisions when it comes time to vote. Um, so the discussion, because it's sometimes easier for people to talk and really get into something with a small group of people, we're going to break into small groups for maybe 20 or 30 minutes so that folks can really chew on this information, ask each other questions, um, and then we'll come back to the large group to share the information from the small groups and as much as we have time to be able to have a large group discussion. So are there any questions about the general flow, what we're aiming for here today? Okay, fantastic. So with that, I'd like to invite up Annie, who is the chairperson of our co-op board, correct? There we go. Okay. 
So, hi folks. I, I think I know most people. I'm just going to do a quick intro in case someone doesn't know me. Um, my name is Anna Gilliard. I've been involved with the co-op since a month after it opened in 1975. I've been employed there since 1985 and I am currently am the board president. Um, I love the co-op. Um, so I'm going to talk about the board's process in this decision. Um, we were approached about five years ago after an annual meeting um, that the Hardwick Gazette reported on and we were saying how cramped we were in our current space. And um, the um, TRAGS came up to us and said, um, hey, we would like to retire at some point. Um, semi soon and um, are you interested in um, in our store but we they made us sign a um, non-disclosure agreement which meant that we couldn't talk to anybody um, and so we kicked it around in the board for a few months and realized we can't make these kind of decisions for our co-op without talking to our members we're not we're a different kind of business it, it's owned by the members and so we didn't feel comfortable um, proceeding at that time, although we did start this whole research of what would that look like? What would it be like? How could we, you know, who could we be if we moved into a bigger space? Um, so time passed and um, then one of our members said, uh, hey, I just saw on a real estate uh, market that um, the Hardwick Village market is listed. And that made us realize it's public now. We can actually look at this publicly um, and so we, we somewhat started doing that although that was also at the time when we went from collective management to a general manager so we had some confusion around that and we knew we would have to kind of let the dust settle and it settled into COVID <laughs> so um, there's been a lot of time of thinking about this process. Um, I think what COVID really brought to us was the extreme limitations of our store for the members to realize that because the staff had already realized a lot of that. We have our storeroom is um, partly on the third floor. We are lugging stuff up and down the stairs all the time. Sometimes it felt crowded in there and it was just staff in there, not customers. So um, it, we really... And as we watch our membership age, we also realize the handicap accessibility is a big issue. Nobody loves parallel parking, especially when it's only on one side of the street. Um, so those kind of issues made us really want to seriously look at this. So the board's been um, last fall this, um, contracted with Cooperative Development Institute to um, do a market study. That was the survey that many members filled out and member, many non-members. We, we opened it up to the whole community. We had over 700 responses. Um, and in doing the um, research and collating all that that the Cooperative Development Institute did, um, it was really leaned a lot towards making this happen. But of course, there's fantasy and then there's reality. So their next step of CDI was to do a um, financial feasibility. How can we do this? What would that look like? Um, the co-op has no debt right now um, and hasn't for a number of years. So it's, it's always scary to go into debt as any of you that bought a house may know what that feels like. <laughs> um, and so that having some concrete data and comparisons with other stores our size and uh, working with an organization that does this as a business and has done this for many co-ops um, made sense. And again, the data came back from that um, favorable. In the end, I have to say that technically the board could have made this decision on its own without involving our membership. That's based on our board um, bylaws and our co-op bylaws. But none of us felt comfortable doing that. And I also will be honest with you and say that the board was divided on this issue. Some people were just like, we will give up all our principles to do this and combine um, product line. This move does change a lot of what we could be, but it opens up a lot of doors for what we could be. The sale price includes the inventory, 
The Trags want to retire. They're in their mid to late 60s. They're really done running a grocery store. It was going to sell no matter what, um, but knowing that they approached this a number of years ago and it still hadn't sold, it really, they were, they're pretty burnt waiting out for it to sell. Um, they were pretty excited when we reapproached them. The, the sale price does include the inventory. That's pretty different for us. It's conventional grocery. Um, but what it really opened up for many people on the board was this is an opportunity to be a grocery store for our entire community, not just the crunchy granola crowd that we've been known for since 1975. <laughs> and um, we haven't, you know, that there are some board members that resigned over this issue. One was felt that it was too expensive, and the other one just was the principles were were hard for him to swallow. Um, some board members abstained in the final board vote, but in the end, um, the there was a vote to go ahead and proceed with this process, and so we have gotten. Um, our general manager, Emily, and we hired Chris Duff as a project coordinator, and we have started moving ahead on this process. That process involves you as members, because in the end, we are a co-op, and you are the owners of our co-op. Um, like I said, the board could have made this decision. No one felt comfortable making that decision without involving our membership, because that's really what a co-op is about. So here we are today, our first member information meeting. Hopefully we will get enough information out to you that you can feel comfortable with what we've been talking about. Um, and hopefully we can um, move forward on this whole process. Um, and we have, it's been interesting just initially getting the word out. Um, with the article in the Gazette and Front Porch Forum and uh, our newsletter. The feedback has been mostly positive, but there's also been some pushback from um, some members and pushback, um, maybe pushback isn't the right word, concern. This is a big change. It's not just a big change for our co-op, it's a big change for the employees at the Hardwick Village Market. It's a big change for the people that rely exclusively on the Village Market for their grocery needs. Um, it's, it's big and it affects not just our co-op, it's gonna affect the whole town. And we're really hoping that we can make that a really positive effect and be a community grocery store. So I'm gonna wrap that up. And then, on, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna turn this over to Catherine BC, who is um, of the Cooperative Development Hi, Institute, yes. and um, and she can tell you how we got to where we are now. Hi, um, thank you everybody for including me in your important ownership meeting. Um, I'm Catherine Bessie, and I apologize for not being able to be there in person with you all today, as I would have liked to have been. Uh, and I'm really grateful that I've been able to um, be sort of imported in here through audio. Um, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about who I am and what our research has been on behalf of Buffalo Mountain Food Co-op. Um, I'm Catherine, the Coordinating Director and Food Systems Specialist at the Cooperative Development Institute. We are a group um, that serves the entire Northeast. We serve food co-ops and all kinds of other co-ops, worker-owned enterprises, consumer-owned enterprises, in both the launch and startup of uh, new cooperatives, the transition of existing businesses over to uh, cooperative structures, and the support for existing cooperatives with growth and transformation planning, um, such as we are supporting you all with um, we, so uh, we do a lot of pro bono work because our mission is all about supporting a just and equitable economy that meets the needs of every person. Um, and so we've been really grateful to be able to support you all uh, with, with some of that and also um, contribute towards your, your growth and transformation planning here. Uh, I think the intro was a really great outline of our research methods, but basically 
What we did was we conducted some market research. We looked at your community, your catchment area, about 30 mile radius around the store. Uh, we conducted the community survey that many of you participated in, and we saw that uh, over 90% of the 700 people who uh, contributed to that survey were amenable to a change, uh, particularly if it included having a sort of walkability and retaining that sort of main street appeal of your current location. Um, we also did an analysis of your financials to see all right, so we see that in your community, you're currently only capturing 4% of the market that is available in grocery. Um, we see that your members uh, sort of unanimously desire uh, increased variety, greater selection, more elbow room, uh, more accessible parking. And we saw that the current financial situation had little room for improvement, um, sort of up against that sort of glass ceiling of capacity uh, with you know maybe some slight tweaks here and there with your margins um, as a business but otherwise really operating at 2.2 million in the space that you are in is absolutely remarkable um, so we conducted a financial feasibility assessment uh, where we looked at sort of assuming the move year one through year five after moving and we saw that, we, we assumed also that you would be um, fundraising uh, through member campaigns and general community fundraising, which seemed really reasonable given the amount of support, overwhelming support on the survey for the co-op, members and non-members alike. We had over 300 non-members who also participated in the survey, showing care and concern for the co-op. Um, that we also assumed that you would be absorbing the existing inventory because that's part of the purchase and sale um, sort of agreement details that have always been in place uh, with moving. Um, and we sort of assessed, would this be a financially healthy change? We looked at several different dimensions of this change from a financial lens to corroborate um, so what we were seeing in the income and expense projections. We looked deeply at the financial uh, statements from the current year and some prior years, given that things have been a little bit tumultuous with financials during the time of COVID. We also looked at basket size and square foot sales, um, the basket size being sales per customer uh, and sort of your current, what's happening um, at the uh, village market and uh, what might happen if you took your, your kind of inventory and put it also at the village market. Uh, so we looked at all of these things. Um, we basically saw that a break-even analysis said that you don't have to quite double uh, in the new space in order to be financially feasible in year one. You can sort of change from 2.2 million to 3.6 million uh, with the move in year one and slowly grow to over four million over time within that five year period and that will deliver you some financial feasibility for this move. Uh, we did conservative estimates that looked at really growing slow, um, uh, really spreading the loan out that you would have to take out over an extended period of time that would get you 3.7 million in year one for your break even, which is more than you need based on the break even analysis, but just more than you need. Whereas more generous projections that would get you towards a 24% labor margin, which I know was very important with some board members um, as a labor margin goal in the first five years, that uh, uh, you would need about 3.9 million. So still not quite doubling, but coming close to doubling within the first year after the move. So all in all, um, our assessment was that this is, is doable, reasonable, with at least a $200,000 fundraising goal in the community and with other options for fundraising, member loan options and so on. 
we recommended that this be coupled with a lot of excitement, uh, marketing, and community engagement around such a change. Um, however, we also found it ideal and fortunate that you were able to find such a facility with so much outdoor space near a water body um, and still very walkable to your current location to help maintain that walkable downtown lunchtime vibe that seems to be really a huge part of what Buffalo Mountain New Food Co-op brings to the community. Um, we also uh, recommended that this be coupled with a new member campaign because of how many people there were on the survey who could add equity to the co-op and support this kind of a transition through membership. Um, and that 300 non-members who took the survey also said that the location was part of why they might not be members. Well, elbow room and parking being some major barriers to accessing the co-op for more than maybe just a quick stop. So all in all, we uh, have seen that even with very conservative financial estimates, uh, you can attain that break-even point um, within the first year. It's tight and that's, it requires these additional things, fundraising, marketing, uh, but it is absolutely doable and we are in support um, of you all moving forward with this, if that's something that you all decide to do. And again, at CDI, we're here as a third party to make objective assessments of these kinds of things so that you can put the emotional aspects of this kind of a change aside and, and just look hard at the numbers and listen very much so to what the community is saying. Um, and so that is what we've done. We have delivered a full report to your board um, that outlines this as well as a financial feasibility report and a board presentation that went into their decision as well. And with that, I will hand it to the next person or open up for questions. Thank you so much, Catherine, for calling in. Um, we'll do the questions at the end and we'll pull Catherine back in if anyone here has specific questions for her about the information that she presented. So now we've got David Lute, who is one of the co-op's board members. Hi. Y'all are very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> So here we are in Hardwick, and we have one, two, three uh, food stores in town. You want me to speak up? I'll hold the mouth, the mic closer. Yeah, there. So we got three, three food stores in town, and everybody that we can think of, and people we can't even think of, go there and get food for their families and go home and cook it. And that food and that love powers all of the schools and all of the roads that need to get fixed and all of the power lines and all the trees that get, got to get cut down during the storms and this building right here and everything that we can possibly imagine. And as I thought about you know, the possibility of doing this move, um, I kept telling myself again and again, it's, it's not just an empty building over there. It's a store that's been an independent grocery store for longer than I've been born, probably. I don't know. When did Halls open? Did anybody know? Yeah, longer than I've been alive. And the relationships that people formed, you know, going into that store, living in this town, living their lives, building this town into the place where we, we live and where we love to be, um, are immeasurable. And they're what make this place great. And so I sat there thinking about all this, you know, and thinking about the, you know, the services I use and, you know, the people I interact with and, and 
I decided to make a little goal um, that would help me see clear how I wanted to approach this move. And so I'm going to share that with you right here. I want to see our co-op become a hub for the entire community. I want to see the farms and fields and woodlots full of produce and people and wildlife. I want to see the topsoil thick and rich with life. I want Hardwick to be filled with growing, healthy families, families who love it here and are invested in this community deeply. I want to see us emphasize local food, soil health, and resilience by serving the entire surrounding community. And I held that, um, that goal in my heart as I you know, listened to a lot of the, the reasons to maybe do this, the reasons not to do this, the risks, the rewards. And I, I kept modifying a little bit so I could make the goal fit the community and the needs. You know, we have Pam and Guy who've been running the store, how long have they had it? Eight years. Eight, Eight years. They're ready to retire. And a huge section of our community uses that store and they go in there. And so how, how can we fulfill our need for a little more space and fulfill the needs of the people who've been shopping there since before I, I was born? That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, David. So now, um, Emily Hirschberger, who is the COPS general manager, is going to do a presentation. Thank you. Hey, everybody. It's really great to see you all here. And I'm going to spend a little time to answer some questions we've already received and kind of lay out some information that we do know. And it's been great to get feedback. We've already gotten quite a bit of feedback through comments online or um, emails to us. It's been really fantastic. And I hope, I'm really looking forward to all the information we gather from you all today as well. So two big themes that have come out of folks who are concerned about the move are what's going to happen to the current employees and what are going to happen to the products and the affordable prices that are at the village market. So. I want to answer those two questions as best I can. So first of all, as David mentioned, that store isn't simply a building with food in it. It's got people that have been there and working and folks that use it. And it is about three times the shelf space of our current store. So we believe that we can fit a good bit of their, some of their products and our products in the same store to become that community market of choice for the entire community. So that talks a little bit about product mix. Um, we're going to do our best to keep prices low. Uh, we've done a lot of work. I've been at the co-op for about two years. We've done a lot of work with the staff and those who do buying and setting prices to better understand how the math of that works, how we calculate it, how we can adjust it, and still um, meet our targets that we create for the year to maintain a healthy business. So I feel like we're positioned well to really analyze prices and do our best to keep them low, as well as with being able to buy more goods. That's how you get a better price from the folks you per we buy stuff from. It depends on volume. So that's why sometimes our prices might be cheaper than Walgreens, for instance, because they just buy a lot more when they buy things. So hopefully in that space, we have a little more space. We'll be able to keep our prices as low as we can. Um, and then as far as the people, we're going to need the expertise the folks that work there now have. And if we want to have a community market for everyone, it includes blending their staff and our staff. Um, the way we work together as a team is going to be felt within the whole store and make it welcoming to the whole community. So to that end, we had our first meeting with their staff yesterday where we met with them and introduced ourselves and got to know them a little bit. And then once we get done with the member vote, if it's favorable towards moving, we'll continue to have meetings with their staff as well as one-on-one -on -one conversations that I'll have with them as we determine what it's going to look like in the store, how much staff we need, what we need people to be doing. Um, so that's the timeline on that. And we're definitely interested in maintaining a good bit of their staff as we can. 
Um, there's always change when change happens. People come and go and life happens. Um, so I don't expect everyone from both staffs to be there, but hopefully we can retain a good amount. Um, so that's a little bit about staff and prices. A couple other questions we've received. Um, one was about timeline. Um, just like I mentioned, we have our member vote starting October 10th. That'll be done in two weeks, so by November we should know. And we hope to have an announcement at that point. If we are going to be moving, we will have a capital campaign ready. So if you're looking to donate, we'll have information about that soon. Um, you can also talk to me. We'll, we'll know stuff soon. Um, and then the closing is in January, so the beginning of January, after the holidays. None of us wanted to move a market in the middle of the busy holiday season, so we're waiting to January to do that. Um, and then we have some renovations to do. We're not sure how long it's going to take, hopefully not too long, and then we'll try to be open up soon after that. So that's a little bit about timeline. Another question or another comment I want to make is we keep referencing this feasibility study, the market feasibility, and we're going to get that on our website in the next few days. So if you want to learn more information, our website has a whole page dedicated to information about the move. It has our, um, a copy of our latest newsletter, and if you haven't seen one, they're in the back. You can grab one. And once again, I encourage you, if you're not a member and you're curious and you want to learn more or want to vote, it's, um, you can join at that table or stop by at the co-op. Great. Thank you, everyone. So let's take a little bit of time now. I'd like to take some time now for questions. And um, I'm going to ask that we keep them to clarifying questions, which means questions that have some kind of factual answer. <laughs> not rhetorical questions or not dis uh, questions that would be great to start a discussion. Um, if I hear some questions that sound like discussion, I'm going to ask you to hold it until we get to this part here, because that's where people can really chew on those kinds of questions and the answers can come from the whole group. But right now we have Annie Catherine over the audio internet thing. <laughs> Annie, Catherine, David, and Emily here to answer questions about what they presented. Um, and I think if there are any questions, random questions from reading the bull sheet or anything else, these four folks could answer them for us also. I see you. Um, we can start with you, but I also um, want to remind folks that we're being recorded. And if for some reason you don't want to be recorded asking your question, Feel free to go back to the picnic table. You can write it down, and Katrina volunteered to be able to read those out. So we really do want to make this comfortable and accessible for all of you to speak as much or as little as you want to. So first question. Um, I just want to know from Bill's perspective. So can folks hear, or should I repeat the question? OK. The question. Good. I like clear answers. Um, the question was if the building has been inspected yet. That just got done last week, and we got the report. We're still processing it, but yes. Well, we're still digesting the 60-page document that came in last night. <laughs> so we can't really speak to it right now. Um, I, I'm not sure if this belongs in discussion, but it's, it's uh, I wonder what the inventory is like if it's GMO filled or agribusiness and that sort of thing. So how does the current inventory that we would be buying compare to what we have in the store now is perhaps part of the question. It's completely conventional. But that could mean just local everything in a regular grocery store, everything you can imagine. But what our hope is, is to potentially have really clear signage for stuff, like maybe the traditional stuff that we've carried, but have like a green shelf tag as opposed to a not green shelf tag so that people can still get the product that they want. But um, within that, yes, it is, the purchase price of the store included their inventory. Um, Yes. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Can you yell or should I be Are you pointing at me? I am. Oh, okay. You're up. As somebody who's gone to uh, the market there many, many years, an issue is the traffic. The entrance into the, into the village on the highway there in front of this new entity is so hazardous that how do you get the, the, the police to engage with this issue to slow that traffic down on that segment in front of the store? And that people go back and forth to the post office frequently. So the traffic is an issue. Excellent. I'm going to ask you to take that into the discussion groups, you and then anybody else that heard that that wants to pick up on it, because there's not our four people here don't have a specific answer to that, but I think it's a good thing to chew on. Um, yes. Um, my question is, I, I go to the market quite frequently there because it, I live at the motel and it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away, and it's on my way to the co-op. <laughs> so. Uh, and I find it a very pleasant place to purchase things, but I have to confess it's mostly those things that aren't special. <laughs> but on the other hand, um, I, I, I do resonate with the need to, uh, it, to have a place that we're not just yanking it away from people that have used it traditionally over decades. Um, on the other hand, and, well, and we are uh, understand the purchase and sale agreement that we would take their inventory on. Does that mean that we have to keep that inventory going? Or once it plays out, are we committed to reordering, et cetera, et cetera, and keeping it going? So is there any written or contractual obligation to continue carrying the inventory or the kind of inventory currently at Village Market? Just the social contract you have with your neighbors to feed them. Okay. Yeah. I can speak a little more to this. Uh, our financial feasibility study that Catherine just talked about does show us maintaining some of the conventional products, um, and that's what the feasibility study is based on. Also, the vision that David was saying, the community market for the whole community, I think in order to do that, we do need to maintain some of their conventional products, um, and that's the vision for this move. That's a good all for discussion in the discussion. So again, I'm looking for questions that have like that factual answers that our four people might be able to answer. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, this may also be for discussion, but I'm wondering how much um, people have thought about how you're going to integrate, uh, what products you're going to limit, what you're going to accept. Um, Manny and I thought a lot about this. We, we really like the idea. But the stores, that the stores that we visited over the years. Can you hit the off button on the mic? Sorry. Like that? There we go. <laughs> um, anyway, a lot of what we saw as we went around the country, there are different levels of integration. And I think that's really important to figure out when you look at the finances and so on. Thank you. So was there any information or thought in the feasibility study or in the financial study that answered that question about product mix? Not yet. So let's take that into um, the small group discussions. Yes? OK. Um, Emily, I was curious how your interaction with the current Village Market staff went. Um, I didn't know if maybe it gave a reflection of how their customer base might react to this change as well. That's a great question. Um, 
we all went into the meeting nervous. Like, here we are, two teams of people meeting each other for the first time. We all have our ideas about who each other are. And I think we did a good job of you know, describing the co-op. Good questions were asked. Um, and it seemed to le to me, it seemed like it ended on a very warm note and like left us excited to figure out how to work together. That's my impression. There are a few folks from that meeting here today, so that also, I think, speaks highly to how the meeting went, too. Anybody else that was at that meeting want to answer that question? No? OK, uh, I saw a couple more hands. One and then two, and then I think we're going to try to go into small groups after these two questions, so you have time to chat to a two on this. I was wondering uh, what the expectation is of where those couple hundred thousand dollars are going to come from in donations. Is that the individuals in the community? Is that grants from organizations? And the other thing is, uh, I heard a reference. Catherine made a reference to 24% labor margin. I don't know what that means. It'd be nice to know. <laughs> Great, so the labor margin one, we'll start there. When you look at a budget for a grocery store or a lot of places, what you look at is your total income and then the percent of your income that goes to paying people. And so instead of getting into like, what do individuals make or what do different positions do, you can allocate a certain amount of your budget towards labor. So what Catherine was referencing is in earlier ideas of the feasibility study, the labor was like 18% which is on the lower side. Most co-ops are between 18 and 24, I believe, um, somewhere in there. So that's what she was talking about. They've run a few scenarios that if our labor needs to cost more or we it goes higher with labor, um, we have some ideas of how that can work financially. As far as where that $300,000 is coming from, we have a couple of ideas about how to make that happen. Um, there are grants out there. There are, VSCCU has some great co-op capital investment that they do. There are some investment clubs we've been talking to. We will be reaching out to the community for sure. Um, but the exact how it's going to work is still being determined yet. Because you get into SEC regulations and you have to kind of pick a path and choose one when you're raising that much money. So we're in the middle of picking our path. Did that answer your question? Um, I have two questions, actually. One is, in the information packet that was sent out, it said that there's $100,000, there's $100,000 of member equity. I wonder if you can explain to us what that means exactly. And my second question is, the information packet said that with our existing building, there's um, deferred maintenance. And I was wondering what that means, what kind of maintenance, what we would have to do to bring that building up. And um, is there a maintenance department? Do we have anyone who takes care of maintenance and so that it doesn't become deferred? Thank you. <laughs> so one was about maintenance in the current building and dealing with the deferred maintenance, and the other was $100,000. Oh, the member equity, thank you. Um, so member equity is when you're paying your um, annual um, $12 or $24 if you're a family, that money goes into a, a separate account, an equity account, and that is, um, so it doesn't just go into the cash flow of the daily um, running of the co-op. Um, it's a separate account that we've been able to do things like buy a new cooler or fix you know, some of the maintenance issues that we do have with the co-op. Um, and um, as an equity, uh, it's sort of like, I don't know, to, in some ways you could say it's more like you're buying stock in a building or stock in an organization, I mean. Um, the equity account, um, we're not taxed on because it's still technically your money. If you leave the co-op, um, you can get a percentage of it back. Um, 
because it's, and that's why it's not tax. It's not income to us. It is purely this money that's helping uh, invest in your store. So that's what the equity part is. Um, as far as deferred maintenance, I think it's just the name of a game with uh, any older building. <laughs> What can you get to? We do have a maintenance department. Certainly that building's in a lot better shape than we bought it um, 30 years ago, uh, thanks in a lot of ways to the fire flood. <laughs> um, but it, you know, but it's an older building. And um, so there is some maintenance that's, you know, there's kind of the ongoing maintenance of, oh, the steps coming down from the street up above us now are rotted out. Those probably need replacing. Um, sooner than later before, you know, obviously before we would put it on the market. But that's that would be the deferred maintenance. It's not intentional and we just haven't got to it yet. <laughs> um, hopefully that answers that question. There's, there's some significant projects that need attention in addition to that that um, have been part of discussions we've had internally, some of us on the board, Emily, um, you know, the, there's a roof between our building and the building where the scale house and galaxy is that's connected to both buildings. You know, that's one area. Like, there's a bunch of for instances. I don't want to go on forever, but some of them are more significant than just the stairs. Did that answer your question about equity? Yeah, so when you pay your equity in, we're supposed to like save it and not spend it in, unless it's for projects like this. Any board members are welcome to clarify that. Um, so there is a pot of money that's there. And when they did the feasibility study, they looked at the cash on hand, what we have in money, what we have in equity, what we have in savings. Do we have enough to last a few months if we move and things aren't the best? Like, And from all those numbers, it was determined we have $100,000 that we can safely spend. Does that help answer the question? All right. So any other, oh, two more burning questions before we get in discussion. Um, it's almost five o'clock, and so that's why I'm pushing this a little bit. But let's take the burning questions, and then I want to get to where you can talk about it all. I just, um, oops. I just have a comment about the equity money. We have more than $100,000 currently in our equity accounts, but I guess 100000 is what we determined would be used. I mean, I think we have one twenty-five and 47000 down at VSCCU. 125 at VSCCU and forty-seven at the Union Bank. Thank you, My other question is about your current building and um, if you have plans yet for what is what you're going to do with it, if you're going to keep it, rent it, sell it, and if you're renting or selling, would that money go into this new project? Um, we're not sure if we're renting or selling yet, but it's definitely part of the equation is doing something with that building and generating income from it, whether it's through rent or sale. And it's gonna be part of the collateral or part of uh, being able to get money for the new building. Um, great. Okay, so now's the time where you can really sink into the stuff chew on it help develop your own thoughts and ideas and also hear what other people are thinking and maybe help develop some of their thoughts and ideas um, as you can see there are um what are those called pads of paper <laughs> around the side and so I'm going to ask that you cluster up around the pads of paper in groups of I, I did a rough count maybe like six to eight people um, would do it if you are comfortable sit um, mixing with people that you think might have different opinions than you have or if it's somebody you've never met before try sitting in a group with them um, because really this is the time to chew on this information, digest it, see what you think, see what other people think to develop your own ideas. Um, 
you don't have to be stuck at one discussion. If you're like, oh, this isn't working for me, or I'm curious what else is going on, it's OK to go check out another group. Um, but again, the, whatever it is that you need to kind of develop your thoughts, develop your ideas, hear what other people are thinking. So as you break up into groups of six, seven, eight, nine people, whatever it's going to be, um, we're going to ask that each group among your discussion, within your discussion, see if you can come out with one exciting possibility that the group can see and one really big question that seems to be like a keystone. You know, like if we can figure out this question, have an answer to this question, this will really help make the decision. So that's the prompt or the suggestion for your discussions. Any logistical questions about that? Yes. Are we going to take a vote on this today? No, the vote's going to be, um, it's going to be t 10 days, two weeks? Two weeks of voting starting at the annual meeting on October 10th, and then I guess that's to the 24th. Yep. So this is in preparation for voting, and that's why I'm saying chew on this, ask questions when you're in the small group, ask questions of other people. Don't just talk about what you think. <laughs> ask questions to really help churn on this and think about it. Will we uh, come together and have more discussion yes. as a large group? Yes, yep. So when we're going to come back as a large group. I'm going to ask each of the small groups to share the, um, the exciting possibility and the really big question. And then if we have time, the, con the discussion can pick up from there. I just wanted to say um, the board members that are here today are going to meander around. Can you do that? Yeah. Yes, we can. Sorry. The, the board members uh, that are here today, and I'm going to point them out, Bruce, Heather, uh, Katrina. Yeah, put your hands up. And uh, David, Annie, and myself. I didn't see Jacqueline here, but we will be wandering around to answer kind of broad questions, but we're not going to try to answer these questions. So if you had some logistical question, we could probably help you with. But um, come up with the big questions, though, and the big thoughts. Um, depends on how your conversations go. I'm thinking like 20, 30 minutes. But I'll also make the rounds and see how, how things are moving along. Okay? All right. So if you don't mind, break yourself up into groups. Drag the chairs over because it's important that you're comfortable. So take a chair. Mix yourselves around. And there are markers there by the paper if that's helpful. Conversation. I believe, Emily, am I correct that um, the website or a future bull sheet is going to have information going back out? So, yes? Okay, so there's going to be a special edition newsletter, the bull sheet, um, which is going to have. Uh, feedback from the community at large so that everybody can see what everybody else is thinking. And so these pages that you all created will help feed into that newsletter. So it will be captured there. But I've also asked one person from each group to come up here, so I'm not running around, um, to quickly report, briefly report, the themes of the big excitement and the big question. So um, our group discovered that our biggest exciting possibility and also one of our biggest questions um, were the same, uh, that it's exciting to think about integrating the community in a, a different way. And it's also a, a question about how can we be more, how can we be welcoming and really create that integration?
uh, somewhat similar, uh, but different. So our most exciting was space. Shelf space, parking space, truck space, all kinds of space everywhere. Um, and uh, the challenge is, in terms of diversity, how do we support choice um, and while also maintaining healthy food values? Um, ours was uh, similar to this one. Um, the exciting opportunity was, um, or possibility was um, creating a more complete community. It was a good opportunity to create community, um, kind of cross some cultural divides. Um, and our, our biggest question was, um, had more to do with um, what if it doesn't work? Uh, you know, the, the scariness of some of the financial um, yeah, but, you know, it's a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that was three groups. Where's number four? A volunteer from number four, anyone? Ah, thank you, Kuchina. I think the, um, I'm Katrina. I think the themes that our group w were similar to what some of you have already mentioned. Um, financial viability was a big concern and th we spent a lot of time talking about other co-ops that have moved or expanded and didn't go so well. Um, and then the positives, the exciting things were the opportunity to build community, um, really welcome more folks and we're missing something else. Uh, yeah, and keep that downtown, the downtown location um, really exciting. Excellent. Thank you all for participating in the small groups. <laughs> so um, now that we're back as a large group, of course, you can talk about whatever you want. But of course, I can't help myself but to give you a prompt <laughs> um, if you are willing to share something that was new to you, something that you hadn't seen or heard about this whole process before and hadn't occurred to you, but someone else brought it up in the conversation. You're like, oh. That's, that's a new thing for me. So any ahas that you had from the conversation is a prompt, but of course, it's a free for all for the next 20 minutes, whatever you all want to talk about. Well, <clears throat> I, th I thought the most exciting thing that turned me on was a suggestion in the realm of how to encourage uh, encompassing two different communities together who have a, maybe a different tendency to look upon food in different ways and um, and for everybody to feel comfortable so it occurred to us that uh, being co-owners of the same business so to speak uh, is does help with that but how is that going to happen so somebody suggested that um, we could offer scholarships to non-members to become members for a year and individuals could donate a year scholarship i don't know how much membership is it's what ten twelve dollars pardon twelve dollars that would be probably many of us would be happy to make that kind of donation to call to be able to provide one non-member to take that one year um, membership and that would create a sense on their part of being part of the same enterprise and the three percent discount would certainly be sweetening to it <laughs> so i thought that was exciting and uh, and members making that gesture would also help their heart reach out so I didn't speak into this, did I? <laughs> Other creative ideas that came up in the small groups? Stumper questions that came up in the small groups? Oh my gosh, I never thought about that. One idea that came up in our group was um, if there's a period where the um, existing village market store shuts down while renovations are being done, 
than um, to maybe have a group of people that could, or volunteers to shuttle people who may not be able to get to tops in the meantime and um, do their regular grocery shopping. I don't remember, it was someone in our group came up with that. We thought, we thought that was a good one. Someone mentioned that working together for a common cause on some particular issue that we might all agree on could be really helpful. And this had something to do with the dairy, some dairy, the Horizon Dairy thing, saying they're not oh. going to take Vermont milk anymore or something. I don't, I don't know who I think, but it, I don't. I think that issue might be important. But I love the idea of. Where do we work together on a common cause? Just that whole question just sounded beautiful. Because it, I mean, a good grocery store is a good common cause. Yes. yes. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Other thoughts? Unsolvable questions that came up? Maybe this is unsolvable. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I seem to be really concerned about the quality of our care of the earth and each other in terms of food and how, like with the horizon things, things are creeping in to stop the farms, really. Agribusiness is really being nasty. And uh, uh, when, and, no, don't do attention. Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm, not <clears throat> I'm feeling so excited that I'm just totally losing it all. But uh, so, so this is very different than what, what uh, Onion River Co-op did. They, they expanded and, and they bought, you know, they bought uh, local products that weren't organic and they brought, and they had a board, that, well, I'm just, that's, I don't really know that. Um, but there's a quality of thinking there. And our co-op has a wonderful quality of thinking. And I, w I don't think it's about bridges to cultures at all, because I think uh, that a culture that is, because of poverty, is eating toxic junk, you know, I want to help them to not do that, but I don't think uh, diluting the quality of, of non-GMO being absolutely bottom line and uh, uh, what else? Um, and, and agribusiness, no, 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 we're, we're not going to support that. We're supporting our local farms. That's all so important and, and I'm afraid that that go away. that that would go away, that the co-op's current commitment and kind of buying power to support our local farms would go away, would dissipate or get overwhelmed yeah. by carrying the um, conventional products, correct? Yeah. Why do you think that? Uh, well, can, uh, sure. <laughs> this is the discussion. So, so I'm not that learned about it, but what I do know uh, is that the brands at the village market are many of them big agri industry and then so i'm going to think to burlington city market they've done it and they're not you know they really think about the impact and and what's happening in our country is that industry money is what is behind everything but and they do, our, they've done what they, they're getting conventional that's not Big ad? No, they're choosing things uh, so local. They have organic and they have what they call conventional uh, local stuff that's in the produce. And, and the, the brands that they do choose, they're not the big, nasty power over, take over, you know, the country and GMO the country brands. They really think about that. 
But Village Market, who I don't think has been doing very well economically, I've got the tangent, but um, they, they've got some pretty junky stuff. And, and uh, I think we have to say no to, to that. No to brands and big <coughs> manufacturers and big industrial giants. No, no to the billionaires. But you will I, never get rid of that. You will always have that. Yeah, but we don't have to support it. We, you're right. You're right. So I think part of what I'm hearing, and I'm saying this just to restate it, not because it's my personal opinion, but to hopefully cl clarify the conversation, is that um, I think the idea or is the thought is that if we carry exactly the same inventory that Village Market has right now, that we're going to be um, crossing current co-op values and philosophies a little too much, and to and there's a suggestion to search for a little bit more of a middle ground to be able to carry. Um, a product that the current village market shoppers would want and would like, but also to use, if we can, some discretion so it's not just anything. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. More thoughts? Would you like to add more? Yes. Do you want to speak up or you want to use the mic? Uh, I don't know. Here you go. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, this is not something I've thought about constantly, but um, it doesn't seem to me like the average co-op member who goes there specifically to get whatever produce or whatever he thinks or she thinks is good is going to wander into a new market and suddenly, act, suddenly get really confused and start buying something which is crappy in their opinion. And I also do not think that anybody who likes to buy Wheaties or Cheerios or whatever it is that some health food person might think is junk is going to wander in there and go, I don't remember what Wheaties look like, so I'm buying Cascadian Farms instead. It's People know what they want and they're going to go in there and get it. And one store is only a stone throw from the other already. So if God Almighty came down and shoved them close to each other, and they happened to be in the same building all of a sudden, what difference would it make? I, I sort of feel this whole thing about two communities of people and how they're going to get together is a non-issue for me. Uh, I don't... And actually, I feel like if they put the two things together, there will be a certain amount of learning going on. People will start looking at, well, maybe I should try this other kind of thing. It might be better. Or it's, it's not really materially changing anything to have two stores 50 feet apart or have them together, I don't think. I think it's a non-issue. Uh, the co-op is not going to ban what percentage of the U.S. farmland is organic right now? A very minuscule amount. Uh, the co-op, with all its good intentions, is not going to get rid of commercial farming. I happen to know and have worked for in the past some extremely excellent commercial farmers in Vermont who just for one reason or another didn't feel like being organic, you know, registering that one. Who that club, for example? when I first moved up here. They might as well be organic, they just don't want to bother with certification. I, I don't, I didn't go on too long here, but I don't feel like it's a big issue. I've been a beekeeper for whatever, way too long. Uh, I'm not organic, but I, and I do, I do my best to make sure I don't get any kind of contamination in my hive, but not everybody can. But I am, you know, in standard agricultural areas. Uh, I feel like just my, my gut feeling is that 
we have more to gain by being together. I'm also very wary about having any kind of like very idealistic goals about somehow being a beacon for changing all kinds of people's minds and you know I think the co-op should concentrate on having good organic food that they always, always have and also good commercial food and let people make up their minds. You don't have to, the purpose is to have a good food, a good store, good service to everyone, not to have a mission to sort of like convert the heathens, so to speak. <laughs> I think that would be a big mistake. <laughs> to think that you're going to be some sort of beacon of enlightenment to a bunch of poor people who just need Cheerios and Raisin bread and rice krispies or whatever all the life. I that's a I think that'll be that'll that'll engender bad feelings, I think. So that's my feeling. I'd like to hear a little more about the financial projections also. Thank you so much. So I'm thinking um, unless there are specific questions that people have in mind. Does anybody have specific questions left? Okay. So I'm thinking that this is an appropriate time to draw today's conversation to a close. There is going to be a second meeting. Um, you all are welcome to come again if you want to chew on this in public <laughs> um, with a different set of people. It's going to be um, Monday, September 27th from 6 to 8, I believe. Um, and then um, the annual meeting, again, is going to be October 10th, and that's when the two weeks of voting is going to start. So please continue these conversations with your loved ones, with your neighbors, with your friends, with uh, the person shopping next to you. It's an important decision that we have in front of us. Thank you all for being here tonight. Well, while we're all here, I'd like to appeal to everybody's community. Can you do the microphone, please? Okay, now you're really going to hear it. Uh, I'd like to appeal to community impulses. I need a. I could use a ride down next to. I live in the in by the river on Route 15, just on the edge of Hardwick. If anybody's going in that direction, excuse me. I just <laughs> <laughs> baptized you. <laughs> uh, anyway, and you want to. Well, and actually, if somebody's going over towards uh, Walden up to 15 uh, East or something, we uh, could use a ride up that direction, too. Excellent. Any other calls for rides?